Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm going to introduce you to the GGZ Gaming Zone project. Um, those of you who have been to the developer room, KDE developer room yesterday, might already have seen some in depth di discussion, some detailed discussion on some of the integration points with desktop environments. And for all of those who have not been there or who want additional information, uh, you can get a general overview of the project uh, right here in this lightning talk. So I'm going to um, point you to um, the um, scope of the project. Um, what do we do actually in GZ? Uh, we develop an infrastructure for game developers. So our target group are users, players, but also especially increasingly game developers. We see our project as a as an infrastructure that you can simply use if you create games to save a lot of time. Uh, most of the uh, games and uh, game projects try to appear in a unique way visually, but also uh, when it comes to audio, when it comes to functionality, when it comes to features. And there's really no reason to unify them uh, at this level. But if you look underneath, if you look at the technical level, a lot of work is duplicated by game developers. So indeed, it makes sense to uh, consolidate what is available and put everything together. This is uh, quite successful when it comes to, to graphics, to sound, to animation. Uh, there are lots of frameworks around. You just go to some game development site for the programming language of your choice, and you will find lots of uh, those frameworks. But so far, what we have seen in uh, terms of networking, in terms of multiplayer, um, there was no coherent overall framework where you just plug in your game and you have all the f uh, features you would uh, need for uh, creating a multiplayer community to uh, attract players and to offer them all the features they want to use. Uh, this is what we, we do. We create a server, we create some administration tools, uh, lots of libraries in all sorts of programming languages. Uh, and uh, in addition, we will do the hosting. If you do not have a server on your own, um, it is really hard as a game project to get sponsorship of a server. We have approached a lot of companies. Uh, it was easy in the dot-com uh, times. We got a lot of servers which were then running outdated operating systems. Nobody cared about them. They were rooted. Nobody was uh, responsible for them. Um, and nowadays, it's uh, not that easy anymore. Um, yet, we finished uh, a round of, uh, let's say, sponsorship proposals, and we will be able to announce very shortly. I, actually, I wanted to announce this uh, at FOSIM, but uh, the hardware company who is sponsoring the server uh, still has internal discussion about which server it will be. So uh, all I can say is that it is the same company who produced uh, this keyboard and uh, this monitor. Um, so anyway, uh, in, if, in a few weeks, you will be able to, to run your game on a quite uh, nice server if you are uh, game developer and you do not have to care about this. Um, maybe one of the uh, reasons we do not easily get sponsorship is that once uh, we did the statistics of what people are doing on our server, how many hours they have already played and statistically how many hours uh, this has been the work time of the people. And we calculated that the overall time spent on our server was like 20 many years. Um, so I think that economy might have some reasons to not like us for some of those aspects. Anyway, I'm getting uh, out of time if I continue here. So we also do a format consolidation. A lot of uh, protocols exist uh, out there which are not compatible, even though they, they should. If you look at all the board games, it should be possible to have one board game or one card game. And if there's a similar game on the other side by another player, they should be able to communicate. The same goes for safe games, of course. Uh, I think the format discussion is known from uh, office formats, uh, but we also have the same issue in, in gaming, except that we have less big companies behind it. <laughs> um, we also have a general model for all the players and teams and privileges which comes uh, with it, and also for uh, creating tournaments. And we also have some games to offer. So who is using GZ already? Um, most recently, uh, the two big desktop projects uh, that they already know um, have implemented uh, lots of this functionality into their games. So if you use a distribution which is recent enough to include uh, 
GNOME 2.20 or KDE 4, uh, you will get uh, GZ enabled online games that can talk uh, to each other and which will run out of the box in the cool multiplayer features. Also, individual game projects. There were some older ones, which I do not list anymore because they are not that well maintained, but Precept, for example, is a, a well-known big game project which is uh, running on GZ. If you go to Precept, enter multiplayer mode, the client you see is actually a GZ GTK client. Um, so why do game developers des decide to integrate this um, based on additional uh, things compared to the first slide? Because we have a lot of convenient libraries which make it easy to get all the functionality uh, that you need in multiplayer games. For example, on the client side, we have a, a chat uh, functionality for sending chat to players, to teammates, to people who are your opponents. It, the API makes it really easy. And a similar API for the server side. We also have a way to, to launch the whole uh, networking mode from within the client. If you have a local game, you just um, start playing on the network. Uh, we have a library which makes it quite easy to run all the authentication to the server. So you need to log in and then to select the right room uh, with the configuration which you plan to use because each game can have multiple conf configurations. For example, chess, you could have a chess uh, room on the server which is a training room with an easy uh, artificial intelligence and one where you have on the other side, uh, instead of an AI, you have Kasparov uh, sitting there and playing against you, something like this. We also have uh, web-based uh, community tools and uh, lots of additional tools which are really only interesting if you have advanced needs in terms of creating communities. So we are like a, a building box and uh, you, uh, you can take the individual parts and build together your community for whatever uh, game you have. From the player side, why do players like GZ? Well, because we have, for example, things like configurable uh, artificial intelligence. I already mentioned it. You can select when you start the game in a very consistent way, a way which is the same for all games, uh, what kind of AI you would like to play against. And they are long, something like uh, they have uh, personalities, right? So you play against games, uh, against game AIs which have names and which you recognize and you can uh, play against them every time and as soon as you improve your skills, you can select another one. Uh, you can easily learn the more, or let's say, um, more difficult games by simply spectating and looking what are other people doing, other players, how do they uh, behave in a certain situation. And as soon as you like to join the game, you simply click on join. And from the moment you click join, you simply are part of the game if the game model allows it. Of course, it's not possible in a two-player game if you spectate to simply join, but there are lots of games where the number of players is uh, dynamic, so you can simply turn yourself from a spectator to a player. We call this sitting down at the game table. We have safe games. Safe games is probably an, a very odd feature, something which is uh, easily to do for all games, but when it comes to a game server, you often have problems such as breaking connections. If you have 20 players and only one of them is dropping out, you might have a game where this is creating a difficulty. The game cannot continue, or the server might crash, which of course doesn't happen with our software, but it might happen. Um, what we do is to offer game continuations. So if the server is restarted or the game is restarted, the whole game as it was uh, played will be restored, including all the information about whose turn it was and what the players were initiated in the game and what players were uh, participating or spectating in the game. Um, we have all those privileges which are really useful for the self-control of the community. For example, we have uh, uh, guest players who do not show up in any statistics because they are regularly uh, created by fake players. We also have registered players with some features such as karma or a veteran status. So the longer you play on the server, the more trustworthy you get. We have host players who have additional privileges. They can, for example, organize tournaments in a certain way. And we have the server administrators who can simply 
kick players who are offending or ban them. Um, well, you've probably experienced uh, already if you are playing in a, a somewhat larger community to encounter people who are not playing nice and you need some tools to fend them off somehow. And we have some game lifecycle support for games which have a pre-game phase and then you play games and then you get back to, uh, to the next level or to the next configuration of the game. Now, we had the game integrator's view and we had the um, player's view. Something about the project itself. As I said, we support several programming languages. The upcoming release will finally have five programming languages as first class citizens, so all the functionality available in one is also available in the other. As you can see from the statistics, um, we have lots of uh, C code still. My aim is to reduce this to under 50%, but um, um, for the other developers, you do not have to worry about C anymore, so every, every functionality is available in the other languages as well. Um, if you like even more languages, you can decide to hack on our PHP community portal or on our tools which are written in Perl. Uh, I don't think we have left out any ma major popular language here. If you know any, feel free to join our, join our team and uh, create uh, some component in a whatever obscure language. Uh, I should mention we have a Sudoku tool, board creating and solving tool written in Haskell. If anyone wants to maintain this, Okay, the project size in total is about 200,000 lines of code. This is already a bit less than what we have, so right now we try to reduce the project size simply because of the way uh, we want to maintain it. And we are now uh, trying to integrate some of the aspects, some of our libraries with the game development platforms. What we try to see as platform is something like KDE games, GNOME games, SDL or Pi game. Uh, those are all communities in themselves, they communicate with each other and we are trying to push our libraries there so they will be available, integrated within the development frameworks. For example, we have a nice Pygame integration layer, so if you like Pygame, we have a totally Pygame-like API for GZ and it makes it totally easy to um, integrate multiplayer functionality into your Pygame. Okay, last few minutes. Um, Right now the stable release you find on every major distribution is 0014. So if your distribution doesn't have it, it's not a major distribution by definition. Um, it was released some months ago, as you can see. So this is the stable branch that we are still maintaining. And we recently, just some week ago or two weeks ago, we uh, released a point release which contains all the security updates, critical updates, and some translations. So if you're a distributor, you should update. Um, we will have a really cool release 1.0 uh, in a few weeks. Oh, let's say months. Um, the thing is that uh, the project is now so ubiquitous, so used in all the other game projects that we decide to jump to 1.0 directly, and there's a lot of preparation work. For example, in terms of Unicode functionality, um, additional server capabilities, and general cleanups. Um, so if you are interested in, let's say, getting your ideas into the framework before we do this release, please contact us. And in general, you should help spreading GZ, telling other people about it, integrating it into your game if you are a developer, um, writing some tools, especially for the integration with, for example, instant messaging. We need people who are really into this kind of field, who like to work on games and also on other desktop tools. And of course, if you just want to play, you should uh, play a lot to get the two star rating, two gold star, that's what you get after two years, I think. But it's really um, just some definition, so we simply will adjust this in our code to make you play three or five additional years to reach this level. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, you can Simply send mail to me in German, English, French, Portuguese, Spanish, whatever. Um, and I will try to answer your questions and hopefully we can uh, somehow get forward with the whole state of online gaming on uh, free operating systems to make it uh, a lot more 
flexible than what is known from other systems. Thank you.